When I give baby shower gifts, I usually think that it's more special, it feels like a better gift if I give something in a little set. And that's why I put together the pattern for this little cardigan with this hat. So two things just, I don't know what it is, two things feels more special. That's usually how I like to present it. In these videos, we're going to talk about the hat and well, this, this pattern actually comes with either a hat or a beret. And we have a few different things going on in this pattern. Um, we're knitting in the round, we're doing some fair isle striping, and on the beret, we have a little I-cord top. We're gonna cover all of those techniques. And these techniques, of course, are common in a lot of different patterns, but if you wanna follow along with what we're doing here, these patterns are available over on my website. So with the hat, the first thing you need to do is to cast on your stitches and let me switch things around here. I've already cast on the number of stitches that I need for the size that I'm knitting. And the first thing I need to do is to get this joined in the round so that we can start knitting around and around in a hat shape. So I have everything flat here with no twists, as you can see. Being very careful not to twist is what patterns always say when you're joining in the round. And I'm getting things spread out. The cast on row is always the tightest. You'll find that baby hats knit up on these 16 inch needles just fine once you get past the cast on row. Okay, so my working yarn is here. The first stitch I'm going to knit is right here. Nothing is twisted, everything is smooth. I'm going to separate the working yarn from the tail. The reason I'm taking all these steps is I wanna make sure that nothing gets twisted from here to when I actually start knitting. I'm going to get myself a stitch marker and put it over here on the right hand needle. And I think I'm ready to go. I can pick this up and start working. I'm going to be working in one by one rib, which means knit a stitch, purl a stitch, knit a stitch, purl a stitch. So I knit my first stitch and pull that tight, pull that pretty tightly because we want to minimize the gap we have here. We're joining in the round. Since the next stitch is purl, I'm going to pull the yarn forward between the two needles and purl it. And then pull the yarn back between the two needles to do the next knit stitch. Forward, purl, back, knit. And that's it all the way around. And you'll follow your pattern to do that for as many rounds as you need to for your size. And you'll know you're at the end of your round or the beginning of the next round when you run into your marker. When you run into your marker, you just slide it from the left needle to the right needle and keep going. The next thing we have to learn is working this fair isle stripe in the hat. And that's what we'll cover in the next video. Even though the striping in this hat doesn't look anything like what you would consider to be traditional fair isle, the technique that we're using here actually is fair isle because we're knitting with two colors in one row and alternating stitches. We're actually alternating every other stitch to get this striping pattern, but that's really the definition of fair isle too. So I'm going to show you how to work that and to work the floats on the back and make sure that everything, that your tension's good all the way through. And I'm holding this up. The striping is the same for the beanie or the beret. The only difference is with the beret, we had an increased row and um, a little more knitting before we get up to the striping part. It's the only difference. You'll follow your pattern to, um, for whichever hat you're knitting, but once we get to this point, it's all the same. So I am knitting a beret, so I finished my, my ribbing and I did my uh, additional rows to get the count right and the shape right for the um, beret. Now, and there's my marker. I'm going to start with this main color first and then put my needle in because I'm gonna be alternating colors every stitch. I have the white yarn here. I'll wrap the needle and pull it through. I left myself about a six inch tail on that white yarn. And then I'm going back to yellow and knitting one, going back to white and knitting one. That's the way it's going to be all the way around, but I wanna show you a couple of tricks. First up, I am going to tie this white end 
to the yellow working yarn because we're working with synthetic fabrics, things are going to squirm around. I want that secure. Next up is a yellow stitch, then a white stitch. <clears throat> and if you are, if you have followed along and knit the sweater that goes with this, I showed you a way of working the Fair Isle by, um, and making sure that one color is always on top. In this case, I've got the yellow on top and the white underneath. And that, make, that is a way of making sure that the stitches have the same prominence throughout the work. So what I do, this is one way of doing it, I keep one color, the yellow, on this side of my index finger and the other color on the other side of my um, middle finger, like this. So there, I throw a color to work with the yellow and I throw the color from the back to work with the white. From the front to work with the yellow, back. If you keep this up, the stitches will have the same prominence. And let me show you what I mean when I say prominence. I actually have a good example here on this sweater. Here's a good example. Okay, I actually switched. I had one color on top for this part, and then I think it's the I think the prominent color is the one that you hold on top. And the blue on top for this part and the tan on top for this part. And you see how the tan looks thick here and thin here. You don't want that to happen. You want it to look smooth all the way down. That's a mistake I made on this sweater before I got smart about what I was doing. And then you can see on the bodice here, I was careful and I kept the same, the same color on top the whole time. Anyway, so that's one way of doing it is um, keeping one yarn here and one yarn here and just throwing it as needed from the finger that's holding the yarn. There's another way that I often do this. It's a little more complicated. I twist the yarn into an X like this. You see that? I take my index finger and put it up into the X like that and grab the yarns in my working in, in my hand, in my right hand. Let me show you that again. I create a surface and I make an X like this. There we go. This is the hardest X I've ever had to make. <laughs> there we go. Then I take my index finger and go up into the X like, like that. So the X is on the back of my finger like that. I grab the two strands in my hand like this and then watch what happens here. I throw the front yarn like that and I throw the back yarn like that. This is actually one of my favorite ways to work Fair Isle. You can see it ends up going pretty quickly. The downside is that you have to watch what you're doing. You can't watch the TV while you're doing this. You kind of have to pay attention. Oops. Anyway couple of tricks for working the Fair Isle striping. You're going to follow the pattern for as many rows as it tells you to do in the striping. You'll have some decreasing to do at the top of the hat. And next up, I'm going to show you how to work the I-cord top on the beret and blocking the beret. This video and this technique I'm going to show you is specific to the beret and what I've been showing you up until now is um, interchangeable with the beanie or the beret. But we're going to learn how to do this little top on the beret and the beanie does not have that. So let's look at the work. We're just about finished here. We have very few stitches left on the needle. I'm going to go ahead and do the last decrease round with you here, which is knit two together around. This is where it can kind of get fiddly because there just isn't much here to work with. I'm going to knit two together, drop that needle. I'm going to put these two knit two togethers on the same needle. In fact, the next bit of instruction tells me that I need to get all four of the remaining stitches on the same needle. So I might as well just work everything onto this one needle. The pattern also tells me that I will have one stitch left over after I work three knit two togethers and I'll just knit that. 
Okay, that was easy, that was fast. I have four stitches left and I'm ready to work two rows of I-cord to give me the little tail on top. And to work I-cord, we are going to slide the stitches over to what seems the wrong end of the needle. This is the stitch I'm going to knit and this is my working yarn. Feels wrong, but it's right. So I'm going to knit these four stitches. Okay, and I'm going to slide the stitches over to what feels like the wrong end of the needle again and work one more row. Whoops, if I can grab a needle. Okay, I'll slide that back over. Our two rows of I cord are finished. And you can either bind those stitches off or just break the yarn and pull the needle through. I think that's what I'll do. Let me grab a pair of scissors. I normally just break yarns with my hand, but this cotton bamboo blend would not be good. I would break my fingers. So I broke the yarn. I'm just going to slide those stitches onto the tapestry needle and pull that through. And then I can pull this into the inside of the hat and weave in that end. Now you take a look at this, it's not looking all that beret-ish, beret-like, whatever you want to say, because the trick of a beret is in the blocking. We did an extra increase row uh, close to the beginning of the hat right after the ribbing to give us a lot more, um, I guess, pancake shape when it's all said and done, but blocking is really how you're going to make this look like a beret. And what I have here I happen to have a dessert plate that is exactly the right size for what I'm, um, I'm going to use, I'm going to block this on. You can cut a piece of cardboard, I don't know, I, I went through a lot of different objects until I found this exact dessert plate in the right size <laughs> in my house. Um, so what you'll want to do is to just put the hat over the dessert plate when it's wet and get it all straightened out. And I've found, I don't know if there's any kind of formula for this, but I've found that if the plate seems a little bit too big when it's wet, when you're first putting it on there, it's the right size. A little bit too big and it'll shrink back down a little bit um, once it's dry to be the right size. So you get this even and with the beret it's nice because you have the striping to, to look at when you're trying to get this even. You can see if it's even all the way around. And so it's wet and you let it dry like this. I guess this could also be an awesome plate protector. <laughs> you want to make up a bunch of these to ship your dessert plates somewhere. Anyway, you let the hat block like that, you weave in the ends, and you're finished. And to, I should tell you, to block the beanie, you just um, get it wet with a wool wash or whatever, thing, whatever you're going to use, and lay it out flat to dry, give a little tug to the the fair aisle part and pat it out and that's it. That one's really easy to block. That's how to finish the, uh, the fair aisle beanie and beret to match the striped cardigan sweater. That was hard to say. Good luck.